The following is a presentation of Nova Hackers. Brought to you by ComputeCycle. All right, so uh, my name is Nate Guigenti. Um This is, well, my third time here, so I'm doing a brief introduction and then a presentation on a passive DNS system that I built. Um, call it finding a needle in a haystack. Um, so I'm 23 years old. I just moved down to Nova um, January of last year from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I've been working in IT for five years now. Uh, first three and a half years, I was kind of a, like a SME for small business. Did, um, you know, like server deployments, Active Directory, firewalls, VPNs, things like that. Then uh, for about six months, I traveled back and forth from Columbus to DC to work on the 802.1X rollout. And then uh, last year, I started working as an IDS analyst and um, I was working mid shift, and so a lot of the a lot of the events were mostly cleared out by the people on days and swing shift. So essentially, I was left to just parse uh, bro logs all night. And um, this is kind of where I came up with the idea. Um, besides working on computers, some hobbies I like, or some some hobbies I'm involved in is uh, being engaged, which takes up. You know, 75% of my time. I just got engaged in January, getting married in August. We had, uh, what's that? We could get married next level all the time. I mean, we had we had the place and the date picked out within a week. I don't know if she had been had been waiting, you know, <laughs> waiting for somebody to ask her and had all those things picked out. But um, so yeah, spending most of my time with her and then play basketball and fish. So. Uh, but most of the time I spend on a computer. Um, so, since, so to talk a little bit about the database, some of the things it does, um, it includes Alexa rank, which I don't know if you all are familiar with or not, I'm sure most of you are, but just a ranking of the top million sites, um, pulls in so some who is information, such as uh, the creation date, um, looks up country code, so, you know, if the query response of a DNS lookup was US or RU or Brazil or something like that. A um, couple of things I didn't get to implement. I know you're not supposed to discredit yourself in a presentation, but four months ago, I started creating this. I've never, I built it in Mongo. Uh, never worked on, I've never been a database programmer. Never built a web front end. The most I did in Python was, you know, read read lines in file and then parse it. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this. And then also I'm doing most of this in my spare time and then some of it at work. So it's not 100% polished, um, but some future implementation will have, you know, ASN numbers, um, pat like passive DNS from VirusTotal, which I had the back end written for VirusTotal to scan each domain, but it only allows you four queries per minute so essentially just to bypass that, I'm gonna create a couple API keys and then thread the, thread the lookups. But, it, it, but getting the passive DNS from, from VirusSoda for free shouldn't be a problem. I don't, I don't think they rate, rate limit you um, for that stuff. But so I guess just essentially this is just a live demo. Um, just gonna start off with a couple of simple queries and then work my way. What's that? You make the font bigger for us little guys. Yeah, the yeah. The only thing is, once it gets into uh, the actual like the results, some of them you know, I have to scroll left and right, which I hate doing. But um, <laughs> but let's say I had two mouse buttons on a mouse, you know. But anyways, um, so to start off with a couple things simple. So Alexa rank equals one. F is gonna come on. Man. So the reason it's taking so long is this polling, since Alexa rank is based off the first and second level domain, it's gonna give you every result that ends in google.com. Um, as you can see that it took, it only took, you know, what, a hundredth of a second to uh, actually return the results. Um, and then the rest of the time is actually just Firefox rendering the page. As you can see, this is when it started 
the actual quarry and everything and then this is when it stopped so the rest of it is just um, Firefox returning the results and I have to I'm currently limiting it to 1500 records just because uh, I, I've spent like 5% of my time on the front end interface and most of it on the back end to improve you know the the time it takes to quarry and just the naming and things like that so um, but essentially that's easy you just skip so you don't have to limit you just skip say you know first 500 results on you know link one second hundred or second 500 on link two I, d I just haven't implemented that so then you know country code equals ru right um, and then the everything over here is clickable so a query response I don't know if anything's going to be host also on this same IP address but those are clickable and there's not but um so then I mean you can click the other country codes in here since I had to some of the times you know whether it's is blocked or um, for whatever other reason there might not be a result um, or in this case this returned another domain name so obviously that's not an IP address but then it tells you the clients you know that looked that up um, the servers they looked it up on the ports first time it was seen the last time query types you know response codes protocols and then the time to lives for all those domains um, so then I'm trying to think of another one we should do let's do um, See. So, I see. Give me a second. I'm trying to think of another, just basic query. Um, is this cool? So th these are just basic examples to show you. Obviously, you can search by the port. So, I know another port. Um, yeah. So it's fifty-three, fifty-three port. I mean, they can look for, you know, DNS requests not over 53. And then working on an HTTP database too, um, you know, you know, you, you probably want to know any any HTTP not over port 80. Obviously, there's other common ones like 8080. Um, and then, you know, stuff like Neutrino Exploit Kit commonly uses 8000. And the environments I've seen is maybe, you know, two requests in a month that aren't malicious over port 8000 so uh, then you can also do regex with with some of these fields so um, you know let's just do uh, try to see here. Uh, I can't think of a regex right now just again this is just ending in RU um, but I have even better than that uh, just the first level domain um, I decided to use LD uh, not because I have a learning disability but just because it's just a simpler format um, instead of level domain or then first level domain and then second and third and fourth uh, some people call them top level you know some people call them GTLDs you know I, I don't know it's just easier for me to do that so uh, to do the first level domain you know you can do first level equals RU um, again, you have all the results. Um, let's see. Let's do can do host length too. So and then it has every second level domain. So second level equals Google. Again, this is going to take a while because the the results of Firefox. Um, right. So here again, Google again. So and then you can see. The second level is Google, and this obviously it's more than returning than just .com. So we can exclude .com, and so we're excluding um, first level domains that end in .com. So you know you got Google SE, Google ne Netherlands. It's an incorrect uh, search, etc. Um, then you can do the length. So this is first level domain length. Um, greater than four yeah greater than four um, and a lot of these things don't have regex validations um, for the domain because recently what in January or something um, they just 
approved, you know, dot cab, dot cat, you know, dot best, dot free, you know, all these other different first level domains. Um, so obviously one, this one down here is gonna have, have things like that. Um, so it's just easier to just write a regex that didn't worry about the last uh, domain. Yeah, exactly. So um, I don't have contains in it, but that's that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where the regex, yeah, dot star Google dot star. Not yeah. So so here, all right. So this is actually one of the queries I built, one of the spoof Google domains. Um, so right here, we're just doing host equals Google dot Google. So anywhere with Google in the in the oh, sorry about that. Okay. Completely forgot. Um, anywhere with Google in the domain name, exclude dot ending dot edu. These are all the other domains I've excluded. A uh, couple first and second level domains, um, and then some first, second, and third level domains combined. So we're going to run that really quick. And then I don't know if anybody here does Mongo programming. Uh, Robo Mongo is a great. Um, interface, GUI interface, obviously if you're elite you do it from the command line, but it's just easier to visualize this way. So we're going to run this query. Alright, so it took two seconds to run this query. Then this is the native Mongo query. I, I've included this just uh, for myself, uh, you know, doing troubleshooting sometimes. Go ahead. Uh, I think I missed something early on. What data center are you querying against here? Is this like a collection of robots that you gathered and then you fed it into your tool? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, I actually only have one environment right now. This is probably only like 50 computers. I, I, um, I do that just for fun, just uh, some data to, to use so I don't have to take data from my environment at work, home, stuff like that. Um, but at work, I think it's close to like seven or 800 uh, computers, a lot more devices than that, um, but that's just like actual end user devices. So does that answer your question? Cool, yeah. Okay. From the DNS server, is this in the uh, Yeah, so these are, these are running off spans and taps. Um, eventually, yeah, yeah, these are running off spans and taps. So and then this is just, essentially it's just, um, uh, like all the bro logs are in, in a text format in a in a CSV with X, with an X what O nine whatever tab is for hexadecimal, but they're tab tab delimited, and so it's just running through each one of those files. Um, eventually, I'd like to program it actually into Bro, so it's running live. But um, it, I mean, this works. So let's skip down some one of the ones I found. Uh, let's see here. This is so right here. So you can tell some of these are pretty. Pretty suspicious. Um, I mean, just by having Google in it, and then some of the other random characters in there. Um, so then you can click on this, see the other domains, see that they're also trying to spoof YouTube. Uh, you know, so like some of the other ideas that I have with this. So FireEye released a report. Uh, what, like March? They had a website was aadserver.com. So it's a adserver.com. Uh, I don't remember what exploit kit, or was it a zero day or not? Maybe somebody can correct me. But anyways, they were able to find, they, they found out that it was malicious, targeting some new exploit. Um, and it had been created, you know, 30 days, 30 days before they had found out. So you should be able to know you know, like give me all the domains that have been created in, you know, last year or give me all the domains that my computers have looked up in the last 10 days, you know, and then be able to know how many times they've looked that up, you know, first time and the last time, things like that. So... What, one cool entry that you can pull with that is you can pull the Whois information. Yeah. By pulling the Whois information, you can pull when it was created and you can also pull the email address. Was yeah. So that so I have the creation date right now. I actually just implemented the creation date last week, and I was out of town. I've been out of town. I just got back from Columbus, Ohio, this morning. Um, so I actually didn't have time to let it run because the querying I was doing against uh, the Who Is Online, they 
rate limited me, so I figured out that if I sleep uh, for five seconds after each lookup, so I had like uh, 60,000 domains to look up, and that wasn't enough time to run through every domain uh, over the weekend. But uh, I, I'll, able, I'll show you some of the some of the queries. So, um, all right. So I mean, obviously you can do you know the the non-existent domains. Um, And then, and then, so here's another one. This is just six co consonants in a row. Um, you know, usually you should have some sort of dictionary words. And then I also don't have my, you're probably going to hear me say that a lot right now, but in entropy, based off of uh, dictionary words, uh, the length, um, and then it, it kind of calculate, calculates an entropy score. Um, I have, I just didn't build the front end to that and I didn't let it, I hadn't let it run through all my data. So again, you have a couple non-existent domains in here. And this database really is only going to be as good as the person that uses it. Um, obviously you can create a couple automated queries of, you know, every time I have a new domain created that's looked, or you know, every time a domain has been created in the last week and has been looked up, um, you know, feed it into a sim or something, um, you know, maybe six consonants in a row with no vowels obviously you know feed it into a sim but a lot of times this is going to be good for historical purposes you know you just figure out a c2 domain for uh you know an adversary or you know just regular bad uh malware from i don't know russian mafia or something you know go back check it uh don't have things like maybe easy to implement pulling you know the domains down from malware domain lists um, and then I have a list of like 60 other open IP slash domain reputation sites that you could that you could feed it in here. Um, in the domain in the environment that I work in, we have I think maybe like 8,000 domains or something that we monitor um, that are, that I query it often to see if any of those domains have been looked up that we have attributed. And then um, these. So then a couple of these other, or another thing that I, um, is on my to-do list is tagging. So after you've already looked up a domain, being able to say this is a C2, this is benign, um, you know, this is just adware, spyware, whatever, the different tag categories. So you don't have to constantly get the same results. Um, so again, this is the uh, six consonants in a row with some white listing. So again, this took half a second to respond. Uh, obviously, it's found 2,300 records, so a um, couple of results. But it's gonna, again, Firefox is gonna take a while. And I've actually crashed my entire computer a couple times before I learned that I needed to limit the amount of results returned. Chrome is a little more forgiving on that. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I got a two-part question for you. Yeah, go ahead. You guys ask me questions all I want. This is probably boring, somewhat boring. <laughs> First, oh, sorry. So you did mention uh, the fact that some of them are returning IP addresses, they're returning uh, other domains. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's on my to-do list. So I have a Trello board. I don't know if anybody here uses Trello, but uh, I got, I don't know, like upwards of like 200 action items to do for the database. I mean, uh, well, well, part two but so, so you're saying like pull it and then see like so this, and then look it back up in the database. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's. Part two is the really interesting part though. All right. So you've heard of deep magic? Negative, no. Yeah, I just start, okay. I'll just say no. Something called deep magic where you basically reverse the NS to the internet. Okay. I'm kind of not getting what to say about Probably get some really cool ties and dig the two together. Okay. All right, so is that, is that, what is it, do you know what it's querying? Like, is it doing a lookup from that computer, or is it? It is magic. So is it, is it on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you distributed more load, and then it just keeps your lookups, like, force enumerate every Okay. Okay. Okay, I didn't know if you just looked it up on the active DNS servers, or he had some database, like, or whatever. So, um. Well, right now. All right. But this is a cool idea. Dark Magic has a DNS. C91. Classic DNS. I already knew it. What was the question? 
He's living in prologues, looking for stuff that comes back out and he thinks it'll look nefarious. Thought it'd be fairly interesting the data set and kind of take whatever this thing spits out. The IP is the third in the magic. See if there's any other things to look at. So what do you do I already have a bunch of people working in the V magic for past IP. So malware researchers look at saying, hey, this DNS thing resolves 127001 right now, but it is resolved to All right, so then I'll show you, so the cre creation date, this is one of the last things. Um, so I actually have the actual creation date and then subtracting the day it was created um, minus the time it was looked up. So this is just days after creation and we'll say all domains that have been looked up in the last, or if it's 20 days, if the domain was looked up 20 days after it was created, um, and then I've looked up a few of these. Uh, I'll try to see if they're in here really quick. Because I'm not going to sit here and try to parse it. So yeah, here's one. Um, this best of software. Just show you. All right, well, hold on. Maybe it's the wrong one. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you can see it's hosting some other malicious domains on this same IP. Obviously, one looking at strike is trying to spoof YouTube. Um, and then, so this fills one, which is that, yeah, that's in there. Uh, guess I just have the link. So again, this is hosting some crappy stuff. Um, and I mean, Dick, you know, again, this is only as good as, for the most part, as the analysts use it. Um, you can get creative. Obviously, it's been created in the last 60 days, you know, and, and Alexa rank is zero. So I chose a number zero for no rank. Um, so this is filtering out anything that doesn't have an Alexa rank. Um, you know, I have some other queries built, but again, DNS logs are not boring, but I can't, you have to like take my word for it or I have to show you that it is malicious based on a website online. Um, and again, you know, in the future having the HTTP, obviously being able to use regex, obviously there's things like URL query, uh, which you can use a regex to look at other websites. But, you know, say you had, for example, you know, the Zeus, uh, use gate.php gate being able to go back look up every you know um, every HTTP request in your environment um, that has has hit that URI um, and then having the Alexa rank and the HTTP being able to filter out posts post requests you should be able to know all the post requests to you know different domains uh, you know first time that post request has been done to that domain um, and then filtering it out by with Alexa rank and things like that make it easier. But I guess does anybody have any questions? All right, cool. That's it. This has been a presentation of Nova Hackers, brought to you by ComputeCycle, a Cranial Thunder production.